the wonderful book, The Science of Wrestling, Art of Jiu-Jitsu from 1946, 19, I'm sorry, 24, 85 year old book. This is the start of an arm scissors while holding a further quarter Nelson on your opponent, bring your right leg under his body. So now you're doing what's called in modern jiu-jitsu as securing a hook. Okay, so you're on his back, you've got him in a quarter Nelson, and you've got your first hook in with your right leg. So this is a pretty simple technique. You've got that started there, you've got the hook in. Now what we do next is what's going to make it so fantastic, folks. From here, he's going to come in, and he is going to pull your opponent's right arm from the position, bring the right leg around his right arm, and quickly bring your left leg across his face and force his head back, thereby causing a great amount of strain on the arm. Continue to pressure on your arm and forcefully backwards against the head, turning your opponent completely over you if you want. So this is a nothing more than a reverse arm bar and brother, those hurt. So from here, from here all he's going to do is step over He's going to push down with that head. He's going to step over with his left leg because his right leg's already in a good position. And he's going to hook it under the guy's head. Now, if you'll just yank up on that arm and roll flat to your belly, you can break his elbow. A reverse arm bar hurts so much. It's so hard to get out of. Because on the, on the regular arm bar, you can pull your ankle back. I mean, pull your elbow back to try to get it past his crotch to try and escape. On this one, you can't get out. Those reverse arm bars, they hurt unbelievably. And he's got it locked in there. And he just really just stepped over. In a street, he could be kicking him in the head if he wanted here. But from here, as it says here, you, this, this hurts. This creates a lot of pressure on the arm. I think that's an understatement. It doesn't create a lot of pressure. It breaks his elbow and breaks his shoulder. So I think that's a little bit more than a lot of pressure. I think it's just called breaking your guy's arm. So he's definitely going to submit you broke his arm. You can't get much better than that, folks. Now, he, if he wants to finish it with a different lock, if you want to finish it after forcing your opponent clear backwards on your left, you will soon have him on his back and hold his left leg and place your forearm on his arm while quickly bringing your arm down and place his arm across your body. So this is nothing more than an arm bar. So if he wanted to take it from there... <coughs> He could continue to roll him all the way over and break his arm with a regular arm bar. Or this will break his arm better. I'd, I'd rather keep him on his belly. Because remember, he's doing this as wrestling, not just wrestling, not just jiu-jitsu. He's doing it as wrestling. So if he locks him up right here and yanks on that arm, that, 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 <laughs> that's, that's really painful, folks. But if he wants to even be nastier, he just puts his left leg and flips him over takes his left leg and kicks it back and he's got him in a regular arm bar. So let's make sure you understand how he got into this. It's pretty easy. He's on the top. He's got one leg in. He doesn't have both legs in and he's pushing his head down. So he's got him really in a lot of pain with the half Nelson. <clears throat> so for the first part of this move to go to the reverse arm bar, he just steps over with his left leg. Now, if he just goes out straight and yanks on that wrist, he can break his arm. If he wants to be nice, he can take that left leg and push it up against his head and roll him back to his back. And he's got him in a, he's not breaking the arm here because he's being nice. He's got him in a pin here because he's doing wrestling. But if he wanted to be mean and nasty like he would in the real world, he just, he just pulls it close to his body and breaks the arm. With, with a traditional jiu-jitsu arm break. So this is such, how, how, how nice is this move? How easy is this move to do? It's, it's beautifully easy. So next time you get your hooks in on somebody, don't get both hooks in, get one hook in, get a quarter Nelson there and you'll pull his arm up. He won't be able to resist, pull his arm up, step over. <clears throat> you can easily put him in a reverse arm bar. You want to be nice and roll him over the other way, you can put him into a forward arm bar and break his arm that way. So that's a wonderful technique. Just a wonderful technique in a book that's 85 years old. Isn't this great? Next time someone tells you Helio Gracie invented jiu-jitsu, tell him 
shut up. This looks like a guillotine to me. Now they're going to call it a chancery. You can take a hold from the referee's hold, pull the opponent's head under your right shoulder, place your left hand on his opposite shoulder, and lock your left wrist. I put plenty of pressure on your opponent's face below his ear and across his jawbone. You can easily put him on the mat. Yeah, you can easily break his neck from here too. So he's doing this. Remember, they're not allowed to strangle unless both parties agreed we could strangle. It used to be in the 1920s if you had a wrestling match. If you both said, well, we will uh, we'll allow strangling, then you could use a strangle hole in a wrestling match. But right now he's uh <clears throat> he's not uh he's not using the uh uh the uh strangle hole, he's using a face crusher here to to force him to the mat. But when you if you've ever had this done to you, if you ever take your hand and uh lock your lock it under his neck in a guillotine and if you reach up and if you reach up and grab and grab your shoulder, grab your own wrist, and put your short hand on his shoulder. By the time it gets to the guy's top of his shoulder, he's unconscious. Hulk Hogan did this to a TV announcer one time on a show who was making fun of wrestlers. He says, well, "Let me show you something, brother." And he popped him in the head, touched his wrist there. The guy passed out. Hogan thought he was pretending. Let him go. The guy fell down and broke his, knocked the tooth out, and broke his nose, and he got sued. This is when you put that. This is not a regular guillotine. A guillotine, I'll have my hands tightened together, right? I'll have a hand lock there, and his arm is in further. This is a pressure, pressured guillotine, a leveraged guillotine, where I lock it under my arm, under his throat, and I put my hand on my wrist and put that wrist on his shoulder, puts him to sleep, powerfully breaks his neck. And how about this one? Here, the block of the leg died with a standing quarter. Guy's trying to shoot for your leg. So instead of sprawling, should your opponent, opponent die for your leg with his right hand, block him by forcing his head down with your left hand and reach under his left arm with your right arm, taking hold of his own left wrist and forcing him to the mat. So try that sometime when someone shoots on you. Don't just sprawl back. Stand there and jank, yank his arm up and put a quarter Nelson on him. And press his head down. He's got to go down. It, he has no, he's not going to be able to step forward there. You just press his head down, you're going to take him right to the mat. <clears throat> the near leg lift. Pick your opponent's near leg and make him believe you intend to force him towards the right side. But instead, reach over for a further crotch hold. So you picked up your opponent's near leg. Okay? And he thinks you're obviously going to roll him over to his right side. But instead... We're setting him up for something else. What you did was reach over and get him in a, you've reached inside, okay, but instead, reach over for a further crotch hole. So instead, he's going to reach over and grab his other leg, and that's called a further crotch hole, and you're going to spit him around in a circle. From the position shown, shift your hole from the near leg and lift it to the further crotch hole. Force your opponent's shoulder to the mat. A fall can be secured. So look, he had him by the left leg, so you understand what's happening here. He had him by the left leg, and instead, he's going to now reach over, and he's going to grab the right leg. So he's going to grab the right leg, and that's called a further crotch hold, and he's going to put him up on his shoulders. This is a good wrestling pin. This is not a great position for jiu-jitsu. He can fall back into an uh, into a leg lock there or a knee lock there. But it's a more of a wrestling finish from right here because right here the guy can continue to roll out and he's got a, a lot of a lot of options here from the bottom where he could do some escapes and stuff. But if, if you're wrestling, he's got a pin right there and he don't have much chance. This is nice stuff here. The start of a body scissors. While working on top of your opponents on the mat, pull him sideways as shown and raise your right leg up in back of him. So you're behind the guy. Now you have him your right leg. Now pull backwards with a wrist lock. Now you're going to grab his left wrist. Put your opponent across your left leg and be prepared to throw your other leg across his body. 
So you're behind him. You're working. You bring your right leg up. You grab his, his left wrist, and now you're going to do a leg scissor. So from here, all you've done is you're going to spin him to the right. So you're going to force him to the right. And now you have him in a leg scissors. After throwing your leg over his body from the position shown, lock your feet together, put a considerable pressure on his abdomen, and squeeze his legs. That hurts most people. And straighten your legs out. Force your opponent down by straightening out his left arm. So now he's, he's going back to the wrestling pin there, and he's just going to straighten out his left arm for a pin. But in the street, or in a jiu-jitsu match, from here, you grab that left arm, you yank it out, you throw him to his right, you have a leg scissor, and now I can do a Americana from there, I can do a wrist lock from there, I can do an elbow lock from there. So this is a good finishing position in a real jiu-jitsu match because they have a lot of options from here. So when you, it's a simple move, ain't it? Simple move. All you did was start here, wrap around his waist, grab his left, his left wrist with your left hand, push him to the side. Now you've got a leg lock. Squeezing him right there, that'll make some people give up. If you were to go to a figure four, if he, that just puts, you can crack his ribs. So instead of locking your ankles right there, if you were to take that front foot down and bring it in further and make it a figure four, you can crack his ribs. And of course, I can go up here and break his elbow. So this is a nice, nice position to be in a, in a jiu-jitsu match. You have a lot of options. And, of course, I can start smashing him in the face right there, too. And I've actually made people submit by squeezing their stomach. And what you do is every time they take a breath, you squeeze it again. Every time they take a breath, you squeeze it again. Now, he wants to make it a really... This is a bad. Most wrestlers do not know the real difference between a right and a wrong way in securing the body system. As shown above, the left leg is locked in the back of the bottom, which is wrong. Half the leverage is lost. The top leg should always be locked in front of the bottom leg. So what he's done here that's wrong, the top leg has to be on top, in front. Not the bottom leg. You can't squeeze. Put the top leg on top. But look what he's done to his arm there. Now he's got his arm lock secured into a shoulder lock. That's called a mirror lock nowadays. And that mirror lock... That mirror lock, will, uh, that, that'll break his shoulder right there. That'll break his shoulder right there. And that, that, that hurts a lot, folks. This is a good jiu-jitsu finish. He's got him in a shoulder lock there. And all he's got to do is, you'll, if you'll study that picture for a second, now he's got his legs wrong here, remember? The left leg needs to be on top. He's got that shoulder, and he's got it barred here tight into his own shoulder and what that's doing is he can just yank on it and it'll dislocate the shoulder he can yank on it and then just pull it just yank it and it'll pull it out of socket when you have that position there you put your shoulder there and you have that big leverage you just yank straight back yank it you understand what i'm saying pull straight back you've got it locked you've got your hands barred there he has his left hand there up on top of his shoulder his right hand is underneath grabbing his own wrist now just yank straight back and you'll dislocate the guy's shoulder. It's a wonderful, easy technique. Do they teach it in the military? Just yank the guy's shoulder out of the socket. You don't have to break it. Just yank it out, and just pull it, pop it. Use your body weight. Squeeze his, squeeze his belly. Boom! Yank his shoulder. He'll break it. So let's study this again before we go to the next one, because I want you to learn this. This is such good stuff. You came into a body scissor. So you've just from behind you grabbed him. Put your right leg up. That blocks him. That blocks him. And it's going to allow you to roll him that way. So now you're going to roll him over to his right. You're going to wind up in a body scissors because you stepped over with your left. You're going to wind up in a body scissors. And the left is on top. That's the proper position. The left is on top. Now you lock in that shoulder. But his legs are wrong here. Lock in that shoulder. And look at that shoulder. That's what I want to emphasize. Forget the fact that his legs are backwards. If you'll just take that shoulder and squeeze it tight. And figure four your arms and just pull. Just yank. You will yank his shoulder out of joint. You will break. You'll dislocate his shoulder. He'll just come. You ever seen somebody's shoulder that came out of joint? I've had that happen to me. It just pops out of joint. Oh, it hurts. And I don't know how to pop it back in joint. And, and, and it, it's, it's very painful. They can pop it back in. 
but it takes a, a doctor or a trained uh, trainer to do it. When you yank that shoulder out of joint, that's the end of his fighting days. He's not going to get mad and say, well, I'll teach you for yanking my shoulder out of joint. You'll teach me nothing. You're going to be crying.